Hey Jacko, in today's video I'll show you how to make this melting effect in DaVinci Resolve that you can also apply to images and videos. Now let's get digital. So this is how my whole composition looks like. A video on the bottom, the fusion composition with the text and some green screen overlay. But I'll just show you how to make the fusion composition with the melting effect. In this case, it will be applied to the text. So let's go to the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition. We can also change the duration, maybe 15 seconds, change the name, put this onto a timeline and go into the fusion page. In the fusion page, I'll be applying this to the text. So I'll use a text node, type in melting. You can now change the font or change it later on. Once you have the text, we'll use a fast noise node, display it on the left side. What I've done is I've increased the detail to about maybe five, the contrast also something like this, lowered the brightness, and I've increased the scale to maximum. You can always come back and adjust these settings. I've also used some seed raid and adjusted the seed. So we have some animation also going on, but you don't need this. And you can also change these two options. But if this looks good, you'll only know that once you have the whole effect. So you may need to do some changes. Now the fast noise, we also want to animate it because currently if we apply it as is to the text, nothing much will happen. But for me to show you that, let's add a displace node, shift space, displace, displace, hold shift to connect it. So the fast noise will go in the front. We're affecting the text as you can see, and we'll go to the displace node Set this to X, Y, so it only affects one axis, not both. And we'll be affecting the Y channel. We can use luminosity and adjust the refraction. If you want a bit more watery type, you can also adjust the spread. And maybe in this case, you'll have to change the refraction strength. It all depends on what you want. Now currently this looks like a mess because we're affecting the whole text. So if we want to affect just a section of the text, like the bottom section, what we have to do is add a background node. This will be a simple gradient. The black will be on the top and the white on the bottom. And we'll connect it between the fast noise and the displays using a merge node. Now the background will be connected to the front and in the merge node, the only option that really works is multiply. And the second option that kind of works is, I think the pin light. For us to see any difference, let's go with multiply, go to the background and we'll adjust the offset so that the black moves down to where we have the text. So at this point, we're kind of just affecting the bottom section, as you can see. So now if you go to the merge, you can go over the apply modes to see which one affects the text. So it's not the pin light, maybe this one, this one does affect it a little bit, not in the way that I would want. The vivid light also affects it, as you can see, and also the red light. But I'll just go with the multiply mode. And now we can go to the displace node and adjust the refraction strength and the spread. So if you lower the spread, you'll have a bit more of kind of a droplets and maybe we can go to the background and increase the height. Now this is pretty much it for the effect. 
to make it look nicer, what I have done is I have added the background node after the text and also made it a gradient In this case I've changed the color of the top one to white and the bottom one to bluish and then after the displays we can add some glow effect so I've added a glow and I've added a soft glow you'll have to make some adjustments So let's go to the glow and disable the soft glow for now. So in the soft glow you will have to lower the gain, adjust the glow size and then you can go to the color and adjust the channels. This goes for the glow and the soft glow. With the glows disabled it looks like this and if I enable the glow and then the soft glow it looks like this. Much better. We could also add some shadow to this at the end. So let's see shadow. And that too makes it look a lot nicer. And now lastly, if I go back to the fast noise and I want to make some adjustments and let's see how the fast noise will actually look based on the changes that I do. So in this case, the details, details can be one. The contrast, you don't want to increase it. As you can see, it does affect the whole effect. The brightness does lower, how far this will affect everything. Now the scale. You do want to increase it, as you can see. By how much, that is up to you. I'll just leave it to maximum. When it comes to the C3, Well, now we don't have any animation and why is that? Well, I forgot one important part and that is the animation of the fast noise. So I'll go to the beginning, I'll keyframe the center X and Y position and then I'll go to the end. I could maybe also go to halfway point but if you then want to increase the fusion composition I'll show you what you have to do. In this case I'll just go to the end put the fast noise down and this will give me an animation. So now we have the melting effect. You can still use the seed rate and the seed if you want some variance. But if you use the seed rate and the seed, the particles just pop in and out. So not really melting. So maybe don't use those two options. Now we can also use this continuous. And let's see inverted how that would look like. You can also use these two options depending on what you want and how the effect looks like based on the image and the text that you use. So now the fusion composition will end at this point. If I want to extend the duration of the clip on the edit page, I can do that. But the effect will end at this point when it comes to the fast noise animation. So to extend that, we can go to the spline, enable the displays, click on zoom to fit. We'll have these two points. So we have the ending and beginning of the animation. We can select both of the points and click set relative. And this will now make the animation continue moving on. So now if I extend this clip, 
As you can see, the animation continues on. Otherwise, it would stop. Next, you just have to find a clip that you want to put the effect above. And if you have an overlay, like this one, you will have to put it above. Maybe use a 3D keyer node. You can find that on 3D effect, type in 3D. Go to open effects, put this onto the clip. With the clip selected, you'll have to enable the open effects. So let me remove this, put this on. You then need this enabled so you can remove the green screen like this. Increase the display to 1, and that's pretty much it. You can then also go to the color if you want. In this case, I've adjusted the global slightly to make it look a little bit more bluish, and that's it. And this is the melting effect that you can do quite easily using DaVinci Resolve. And that's how I can make the I'm melting effect in DaVinci Resolve. And if you liked it, subscribe to the channel. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackal. Happy digital.